What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are talking about three things pertaining to wrapping my vehicle. If you don't know, I spent the last few weeks wrapping my Mustang in Voltage Blue Gloss. This is one of Vivid's colors for 2018 and I gotta say I'm very impressed with the color. If you want to learn more about the process or see more pictures uh, showing the process of the Mustang being wrapped, I will link to the forum down below where you can find more information on that. Now let's go ahead and jump into the details. So we're first going to start off with the products that were purchased for prepping the car before actually applying the vinyl to the surface. I got my notes here and I got my cleaning products on my side that I will reference to and other various tools later on that I will show you momentarily. So first we're going to start off with the clay bar kit that was purchased on Amazon. This is by Mothers. It comes with an instant detailer and also 200 grams or two bars of clay. I use this uh, detailer um, rather regularly so it was a plus for me. It was the cheapest on Amazon and it was one of their uh, Amazon choice or bestsellers or whatever category that they have. So I went ahead and purchased that for $14.16. Next up came the isopropyl alcohol that was purchased. So I just went to the first aid aisle at my local Walmart and I purchased this Equate 70% isopropyl alcohol to clean the surface right before vinyl was applied to the surface. And then I also purchased this spray bottle here from Walmart as well. It's a bottle crew 32 ounce spray bottle. See right there, I wrote 70% isopropyl alcohol on it. The isopropyl alcohol cost me $1.96, that's for a um, 32 ounce bottle, and then the bottle itself cost me $1.97. Just on a side note as well, I also did use my ammo aerator and frothy soap that is currently sitting right behind me um, during the prep process, but that was not purchased for this project. I had purchased this before. I have some videos showing it. If you're interested, you can check them out for yourself. Um, but I did use that in the process. It was probably a bit overkill because I did wash the car as well. And then I hit it with the frothy. Well, actually the process went like this. I washed the car, then I clay barred the car, then I used the frothy, and then I cleaned it with 70% isopropyl alcohol. So that might have been a little bit overkill, but at least I know the surface was clean. Now let's go ahead and jump into the tools that were used for the process of wrapping the car. Understanding where to start and what products to buy to wrap your car can be kind of a process in itself because there is very many tools that you can purchase out there and you can really get down into buying a lot of tools that you don't really need but are more suited for people who do this for a living. Um, if you're doing this like me, which is wrapping your vehicle for the first time or just wrapping anything in general for the first time, then I would highly recommend that you take a minimalistic approach but not too much of a minimalistic approach because you wanna make sure that you do have good quality tools and enough tools to wrap your car. So we first start off with this little starter kit right here that's provided by a company called Foscio. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but this was purchased on Amazon for $35.99. Now let me show you what came in the kit real quick. So right now I have the tools that came in the kit right beside me and we'll first start off with the two squeegees that come with the kit. So the first one and the most important one that I think are the one that I pretty much used all the time was this one here. It has Foscio on it. It is not very flexible as you can see right now it has a monkey strip currently on it. And they also give you this piece of wool which I think is also supposed to be used as a squeegee. It's a little bit more flexible. I never used it. It's a little bit dirty because my dog actually used it as a toy instead in the meantime while I was wrapping my car. Uh, but for the most part I did use this one. Now if you're not planning on going with the Foscio kit, I would highly advise that whatever squeegee you decide to use, get yourself one that is more flexible than this one because when it came down to wrapping the quarter panel where you have to really kind of, well it you don't have to but it's a lot better if the squeegee can conform to the curves while you squeegee away. What's also cool about this kit is that it comes with two magnets here. These magnets are really good 
Uh, they have faux shio on them as well. I don't know if you can see that right there. Uh, yeah, my finger's probably in the way. Hold on, I'll show you right now. So you can screw, unscrew these little um, holders or whatever you want to call them. And you can see that there's faux shio on it. Uh, they work really good. They stick to the car really good. I never had any problems with them coming off as you would try to pull the film off. Um, so yeah. The kit also comes with this razor blade holder or scraper. I think this is probably more useful to probably scrape stickers off or um, maybe old vinyl or something. I never used it as you can see the little razor prop, this orange piece is still in there. Um, or maybe that's just the actual thing that you could probably use to scrape away any stickers or anything like that, but I didn't use it for wrapping the vehicle. The kit also comes with a blade, this 30 degree retractable blade as you can see here. You have multiple um, blades on here, you can break them off. So one of the hard things, or I guess it's not hard, but one of the problems that I had was trying to figure out how to break one of these blades off. So if you don't know here, let me show you real quick. So if you've never done this before where you try to break one of these blades off, it can be kind of scary because it is a razor and it's really sharp and it can cut you very easy and you don't want to, you know, do something too risky where you end up cutting yourself and hurting yourself in the process of it. So since this blade here is pretty much, you know, uh, finished, I'll go ahead and demonstrate how to break off a piece. But as you can see, this blade here is different. Actually, it's the same, um, but I purchased other blades, which we'll get to in a little bit. But so you can see that there is a, I'm not too sure if you can see, but there's a little line here where it shows where you break the blade. So if you take these pliers here and you put them at the end, for example, like that, like so, and make sure that you're not over the line, you can just bend away and the blade breaks off. And so then you have a fresh new blade ready to be used. So just go ahead and make sure if you're doing this outside, you want to make sure that you pick those pieces up and throw them away properly because, you know, if you have dogs like me around or don't leave them on the driveway because, you know, you don't want to cause any damage to your tires, which I don't think they really would, but you never know. The kit, also going back to the squeegee, comes with extra bumpers to use. So you can see here, or strips, whatever you want to call them. So you can see here, I just noticed this today actually. These two in the front right here, the blue ones, these are monkey strips. Um, and I bought a five pack from Amazon. I'll link all these tools. I'll link all these tools down below So that you can see how much or more or less if to have an idea where to buy them from I just noticed that this black one here that comes with the kit um, Is kind of the same material as the monkey strip I didn't use any of these because I thought they were probably gonna be pretty cheap But I'm pretty sure these would be good, but it comes with various ones So the one that I was talking about from the beginning that left the residue behind was this like dark green one that I just didn't like but you can see there's another wool type strip here has 3M on the backing I don't know if that's real or not I'm pretty sure it is but you know it does come with various strips that you can use and the last thing that came in the kit was these tools in here so let me open this package and put it to the side real quick as you can see here they're all the same tool but they have different degrees of flexibility so if we take this back piece right here in the blue you can see that it bends real easy so this piece is more flexible than the rest the red here doesn't bend as easy um, so it's less flexible it's the intermediate one and then this black one is pretty stiff doesn't bend at all so these tools here are very helpful as well when it comes down to the wrap process because I use these tools when it came down to lay the film in the side skirt so I'll show a picture of the Mustang and if you can see in the side skirt you can tuck in there pretty deep but when you give it some heat and then try to lay it in your finger might not be able to push in far enough to lay the film down these tools here come in handy when you can when you're gonna lay the film in so that you can get nice and deep into the side skirt area where it connects with the quarter panel so that you can lay the film down in there and then these also helped when it came down to tuck the film behind the trim of the window when I was wrapping the rear quarter panel. So I would highly recommend this kit here by Foscio on Amazon again it was purchased for $35.99 a good starter kit comes with pretty much all the tools you need. Now just on a side note of this kit. Again, I did cover that I did buy, it does come with a blade, not this one here. 
Um, I don't know where the other one went. But it does come with one blade. Now, I did purchase a three pack of 30 degree retractable blades. These just say Vivid on them. Those were $12.99 on Amazon. Um, you could probably get away with that one blade in the kit, uh, but it doesn't hurt to have extra. These are pretty much the same thing as that one. They just don't say Vivid on them. So as long as it's this design here, it's a 30 degree blade, you should be okay. Now let's go ahead and discuss a tool that is going to be very important when you are wrapping your car. And that is, of course, knifeless tape here. So in this bag here, I have a 50 meter roll of knifeless tape. I'll show it to you real quick. I had to purchase this after the fact. So first I purchased a 10 meter roll on Amazon that came with this vivid detailer right here. Again, this tool is very useful when it comes down to tucking film behind the trim of the window when you're wrapping the rear quarter panel. So I also use this as well as the other tools discussed in the Foscio car kit. So it's cool that the 10 meter kit comes with this tool here. However, you probably can find something else similar um, to this that you can use. And the reason why I say that, it, I'll tell you right now. So the 10 meter roll with the Vivid Detailer cost me $17.88. And when I was wrapping the Mustang, I ran out of knifeless tape. Luckily, I ran out after I had finished wrapping or doing all the inlays for the front bumper. But after that, I did need more because I was for sure going to need knifeless tape when it came to wrap the rear quarter panel because you need a long strip on the top of the rear quarter panel where the, I guess, pillar, if you will, meets the roof of the car. So I had to buy an extra roll of knifeless tape. Now, the 10 meter roll probably would have done fine for that because after that, that was all of the knifeless tape that I needed. But just to be sure, I went ahead and purchased the 50 meter roll. So... When it comes down to choosing knifeless tape, if you don't care for this tool here and you're going to purchase something else that's different than this tool, I would highly suggest that you just purchase the 50 meter roll than the 10 meter roll. Now, of course, all cars are different. So if you think you can get away with the 10 meter roll, purchase the 10 meter roll so that you can also get this little vivid detailer kit. So the 50 meter roll cost me $24.55. And just some other purchases that I made, just to be on the safe side, was I purchased these monkey strips here. They came in a five pack. I used three of them, obviously. There's one sitting on the squeegee that I use, as you have already seen. The monkey strips cost me $8 on Amazon. Again, I'll link everything down below, all the tools. And then I also purchased this three pack of 30 degree retractable blades by, I guess it's by Vivid. It's stamped with Vivid, but again, I think these blades are pretty much standard when it comes to buying blades for wrapping your car. And those, that three pack there cost me $12.99. So let's just go over everything real quick. So I purchased the clay bar kit that cost $14.16. The 70% isopropyl alcohol 32 ounce bottle that I purchased from Walmart was $1.96. The spray bottle cost me $1.97. That was also purchased from Walmart, just real quick. The clay bar kit was purchased from Amazon. The Foscio car rip kit, car rip, rip kit, really. The Foscio car wrap kit cost me $35.99. Again, this was an Amazon purchase. All these other purchases that I'm gonna talk about were from Amazon. So the 10 meter knifeless tape with the Vivid Detailer was $17.88. The three pack of Vivid Blades were $12.99. The Monkey Strips, $8.00. And then the 50 meter roll of knifeless tape was $24.55 and this totaled out to be $117.50. Now, of course, this could be a little bit different because for you, because you might not need all of these tools and sales tax for your area could be different than mine. So other tools that you might need include a drill, maybe socket sets, flathead screwdrivers. All of this is for taking off parts of the car such as the side view mirrors or the door panel, the door handle, the front bumper, the rear bumper, just other various tools that you'll need to remove screws and bolts and nuts and all sorts of things like that. Luckily I have tools that I've collected over the years that I've purchased by working on cars so I had flatheads lying around and other various socket sets that I didn't have to purchase. 
So you can see here that if you don't have these tools, you can maybe get around wrapping your car. I wouldn't recommend it because it's probably not going to come out as good if you don't remove the trim pieces or the side view mirrors or other things from your car so that you can wrap nicely into those pieces so that you know you get full exposure. So if you don't have tools, I would highly recommend that you try to find somebody who does and that you can borrow them because if you don't have tools and you have to purchase them, the amount of money that you're going to spend on this is going to probably rise dramatically. So now let's go ahead and actually talk about the wrap itself and how much that cost me. So if you're curious as to why I'm not doing this around my car or I'm showing my car or anything, it's because I currently don't have it right now. It is getting worked on. It's getting more power. It actually already has more power. I just got to go pick up the car. Um, if you're new here, consider sticking around because I'll be talking about that in the near future. So just a hint, it's currently sitting at about 400 foot-pounds of torque. Um, so yeah, consider subscribing and sticking around so that you can see what's coming up next for the EcoBoost Mustang. So again, I wrapped the car in voltage blue gloss. This is just some excess that was left from the wrap process. I actually have quite a bit of film left. I'll try to measure it to see how much was left. That way you can kind of get an idea of how much I used. Now, as you can see in the photos, I didn't wrap the hood, the roof, or the trunk of the car. I left it the original color, which is shadow black. Uh, so I probably saved some film on that. Now I will mention that in the process of wrapping one of the rear quarter panels, I ended up dropping the film trying to re, uh, readjust it and it fell on the floor. The adhesive side fell on the floor so it picked up a ton of dirt and rocks from the floor and the film was just trash after that. And that was probably about ten and a half feet right there that I had to get rid of. So that was ten and a half feet that literally went to nothing and it's unfortunate but being your first time, you should expect mistakes like that. So let's go ahead and talk about the wrap itself. So I went ahead and purchased six feet by five feet first. This cost me $70.75 of the Voltage Blue. Now the reason I did that was because I had intentions on wrapping the roof of the car, which I measured out to be five feet by five feet. And the reason I went with six feet by five feet was to have that extra foot to also wrap the side view mirrors, which um, are a bit difficult, let me just put it that way. I didn't end up wrapping them anyways because I liked them better black with the blue. It accented it really nice. And then also, they're kind of a pain to wrap. So I went ahead and just didn't wrap them after all. So that was a waste. And I actually still have the five feet by five feet piece that I was going to use to wrap the roof left. Um, so that was also a waste. So I wouldn't advise doing that. If you're set on a color, um, whatever that may be, just purchase that color and purchase what you think you're going to need. That way you don't waste money like I did. So again, that was six feet by five feet. That cost me $70.75, which was pretty much a waste. Didn't really use it, um, but I have extra in case I ever need to rewrap something on the car, which is beneficial. So just before I move on, the original color that I had wanted to go with was Demon Gloss Black. And what kind of gave me the confidence to wrap my car was, you probably know him, and to quote him, which was Christian from, you guessed it, at CK Raps. Um, I think the video that probably attracted me to his channel was probably the Mustang video that he had. I'm pretty sure I saw it on the feed or the suggested videos and I went ahead and clicked onto it and I started watching it and I started watching more of his videos and lo and behold I got this idea in my head that I could potentially do this myself. So then I started looking at Vivid Wraps because that's kind of one of the brands that he uses quite often or at least makes videos on quite often and I started looking on their website I started looking around for colors, didn't really see anything, and then they released their colors for 2018. At least I think they released them. They might have been there the whole time, I'm not sure, but I never noticed them even though they were literally sitting right there on the front page. Anyway, I saw Demon Gloss Black. I wanted to purchase that one, and finally when I got enough courage or was ready enough to purchase the color or the wrap, 
I went onto Vivid's website and lo and behold, they were sold out of Demon Gloss Black. So I started looking at the other colors. I saw Voltage Blue, was really interested in it, and I went ahead and purchased that, as you can see. So when it came down time to purchase the wrap, I purchased 75 by 5 feet. And the reason I purchased 75 by 5 feet was because I think I googled how much wrap do you need to wrap a Mustang. And I'm not sure exactly where this was from, who asked, but I think somebody who knows Christian was on this forum or something or on one of the comments and said, I'll ask him and then came back with the answer of 75 by 5 feet that he would recommend starting with 75 by 5 feet. So that's what I went with. I purchased 75 by 5 feet. That totaled out to be $390.56. Now you might be looking at that or you hear that and you think that's probably really cheap. How is 75 by 5 feet in voltage blue gloss $390.56? So originally it should have cost $557.93 However, I got a discounted price on the film, and the discount was $167.37. Now, you're probably wondering how I got that discount. Now, I don't know if Vivid constantly runs this promotion or um, is always running this coupon code, but another YouTuber that I had watched before, I think it was either John Hill or Sarah Dietschy, um, if you're not familiar with them, they're pretty cool. They got pretty cool YouTube channels, I would check them out. If you're into skateboarding, John Hill's your guy. If you're into tech, Sarah Dietschy's your girl. Um, I think it was Sarah Dietschy. I'm not too sure, but she posted a video or one of her vlogs. Um, on one of her vlogs, she showed this add-on. I'm trying to formulate the right words here. My camera's about to die. <laughs> okay, so we're back. Sorry, my camera died. I had to charge it real quick. Uh, we left off at discussing how I was able to get the film for a discounted price. So again, I think, if I remember correctly, it was a YouTuber by the name of Sarah Dietschy who talked about this add-on for your web browser called Honey. And so what this add-on does is that every time you're looking at your cart in a certain website like Amazon or Vivid, this add-on will pop up if it finds codes, uh, coupon codes for you or whatever codes that did you add, I think there's a specific name for them, I can't think of it right now. Um, but it'll pop up and it'll show you, hey, like I've got 10 codes that I can try for you or something like that. And so you click on it and it'll run through the codes and try to apply them and try to get you a better price or it'll tell you that you have the best price that is on the internet or whatever right now. Or I don't know how it works exactly, but it hasn't worked for me since I downloaded it. So every time I go to purchase something online, either the codes that it tries don't work or I've got the best deal. And the least place that I would expect it to work, which is Vivid's website, there was actually a coupon code that gave me $167.37 off. So was that a one-time thing? I'm not sure. Um, it's worth a shot, I guess, but the add-on was called Honey. I'll try to link it down below. So just to recap, the 6 feet by 5 feet that I purchased was $70.75. The film was around $50, but the shipping was about $13. Again, that was just a waste of money. If you're set on a color, buy what you need. Don't try to do what I did. Or if you want, just buy a sample roll, which is $8.99 from Vivid, and don't try to buy any more than you need. And the 75 by 5 feet was $390.56. That totaled $461.31. Combining the tools that I purchased as well as the film that was purchased, that gave me $578.81. So all in all, what I spent on ter in terms of tools and film was $578.81. I gotta say that is probably really cheap, but what made it really cheap was the discount code that was applied to the film. So I know what you're thinking. You're probably wondering, okay, he showed all the tools except for one very important one, which is the heat gun. And you are correct. I did not show the heat gun because I did not purchase the heat gun. I actually borrowed it. Let me see where it's somewhere around here. Let me get it real quick. So this is the heat gun that I use right here. It's by Cobalt. I believe the catalog number is HG2000. 
I'm not sure how much it is. I'll look it up and link it down below. But I actually borrowed this. I didn't buy it. So I got lucky on that part. But if you're going to buy a heat gun, I would recommend the one on Amazon. That seems to have very good reviews and seems to heat up. Don't try to get one. You just look at the reviews and make sure that whichever one you're buying just generates a lot of heat because that's going to make it a lot easier for you and a lot faster when it comes to wrapping a car. I'm not sure how a blow dryer works. I've heard from other people that it's not recommended. I don't know if it works very well or not. I'd imagine it has, it works to some degree, um, but maybe, I don't know. I, I would not recommend a hair dryer. Just get an actual heat gun and use that. Also in Christian's videos from CK Wraps, he uses an air compressor to blow off contaminants from the surface before he applies a film. Now I could have also borrowed an air compressor, but I decided not to just because I never got around to picking it up. But instead what I used was a shop vacuum that I've purchased probably maybe three years ago from Amazon. I think it was like 30 or 40 bucks. I'll try to find it and link it down below as well. So this vacuum, which I believe is how most vacuums work, but I don't know if you can use those vacuums in the same way. You have two inlets in this vacuum, which one is to suck in the air and then there's an outlet where air comes out. So you can utilize both of those, the inlet and the outlet essentially, one to vacuum obviously and the other to blow off contaminants and that's what I use here. Let me show you the vacuum real quick. So obviously if you're going to use a vacuum, you want to make sure that you clean in the inside first really well, that way no contaminants are blown out of the vacuum onto the paint surface. Um, when you're when you're cleaning it. So here I have this one right here, this Armor All shop vac, utility vac that I purchased a few years ago. So this inlet right here is the part that you use to vacuum and basically pick up stuff. This part in the back is the part that blows air out and that's what I used before I would put the film on. I would just blow it down. It didn't work too good. I'd imagine an air compressor works much much better but that's just something to keep in mind so you can save a little bit of money and you might have that on hand so you can use that instead. So now let's go ahead and talk about how much time it took for me to wrap my car. So again, I didn't wrap the roof, the hood, or the trunk of the car. So that saved me some time right there. But if you're going to wrap those pieces, then I would suggest I would take the time interval that I'm going to give you as um, an underestimate because I probably would have taken a lot more time to wrap these pieces, but let's go ahead and get into how much time it took to wrap the car. So I'm going to write this down as I go. So because I really don't have an exact time, I didn't time myself or anything, I'm just going to kind of give a guesstimate as well. But let's take the rear bumper first because that's the first piece that I started with was the rear bumper. So I started off with the license plate inlay, which was a pain in the butt because it was the first thing I decided to wrap. An inlay was the first thing that I decided to wrap. How genius is that? The hardest things to do, I think, in terms of wrapping a vehicle, is probably inlays and overlays, as well as wrapping around corners. And here I was starting to wrap my vehicle with an inlay. The rear bumper license plate area was what I started with. It was a pain in the butt, and I would say it probably took me five hours to get a very mediocre job. So we'll say five hours just for that front plate inlay. And the, so the rear bumper itself took me another eight hours to complete. Now the rear bumper isn't too, too bad. Now again, these times do include prep as well as removing the rear bumper. I didn't remove the rear bumper completely. I just removed it enough so that I can pull out the sides so that I can tuck in nicely around the those um, or tuck in nicely into the, those those crevices so that it would look like there's full exposure. I mean full coverage. Well, there is full coverage, but just so that I could tuck in nicely so that there would be full coverage. So that's 13 hours to wrap the rear bumper. Next, I went ahead and wrapped the fenders. Yes, I wrapped the fenders next. So let's talk about the fenders. The fenders were both completed in one day. Let's see, I got off of work and I went straight to wrapping and I didn't finish till the night time. I think it took me about seven hours to wrap the fenders there. So that was both of them that included prep 
as well and just getting them ready for the vinyl. The fenders weren't too, too bad. So yeah, I was able to knock both of them out in one day. It took seven hours for both of them. Next, I did the front bumper. And that took a while because I had to remove the front bumper, take all the grills off, take the, the, spoil, the chin spoiler off or the whatever piece that you want to call it, that just front grill, whatever. And it's not a grill, it's, it's a lip, okay? It's a lip. Get it through my head. It is just the front lip, okay? That took 15 hours from start to finish. That was, that also, you know, removing everything, cleaning everything, prepping it, putting the film down. That also does include the inlays. There was a lot for the front bumper. 15 hours for that alone. Next, we went up to the doors. The doors weren't too, too bad. Probably five hours each one. So that's a total of 10 hours for both doors. That again includes prep and everything. Then the side skirts. The side skirts weren't too bad. Four hours each for each side skirt. That's eight hours right there. Again, that includes prep. I think I've said that enough. So what's left was the rear quarter panels. The rear quarter panels also took a long time to do. Okay, so each rear quarter panel took me about 10 hours each. So that totals out to about 20 hours for just the rear quarter panels alone. That's that's a lot of time. And the reality behind the rear quarter panel is that it's not that it's very hard. It actually, yeah, it's, it's pretty hard. It's more tedious though than anything. And even when you get done wrapping the rear quarter panel, like you've laid everything in, the cutting process takes a long time. So even when you think you're done, you're like, yes, I finally laid down the product. It's done. You still have quite a bit to go in terms of cutting and tucking the film. So the rear quarter panel takes a long time to do. And the reality behind it is that if you're doing it for your for the first time, you're going to be pulling back a lot and you're going to be using a lot of heat to lay it in. And so, yeah, it took me 20 hours for both of them. That's pretty crazy. Let's go ahead and add up how much time it took to do all of this. So totaling everything out, it took me 73 hours to wrap my car. Again, that does not include the roof, the hood, or the trunk of the vehicle. Realistically speaking, it probably took me 80 hours to do it. I think I'm underestimating myself, especially for the doors. I don't think it was 73 hours. I would say give or take about 80 hours that it took me to wrap my car. So yeah, definitely plan for days to spend wrapping your car if you're gonna be doing this for the first time. I would highly advise to practice on small pieces and just practice glassing out the film first before you actually try to wrap your own vehicle. That way, that could potentially save you a lot of time when you actually go to actually wrap your vehicle. Or you can just do it like me and just dive head in first into three feet water and figure it out. Anyways, I hope you got something from this video. I hope you learned something and I honestly think that for this process I spent less money than most people do. I'm not sure. I haven't looked. Uh, but there are cheaper films out there that you could vouch for. There are tools that you don't necessarily need. Again, going back to the tools, you might not need to purchase the extra blades like I did. You might not need to purchase the extra knifeless tape like I did or the extra film that was just kind of a waste. So it could definitely fluctuate. Again, you might need more tools, you might need more film, you might need less film, you might need less tools. It just depends, but this hopefully gives you a ballpark figure onto what to expect on how much money and time you will have to realistically put into wrapping your own vehicle for the first time. So again, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. I'll get back to you in a timely manner. I hope you liked the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe because we got a lot more coming for the Mustang and just other car related things in general. The Mustang, when I receive it back, will be making more power. So stay tuned for that because that's coming soon. And as always, I'm Steven out here hanging out, having fun. See you in the next video.